I'm Molly Stanberry, and welcome to MacMost, the video podcast that shows you how to get the most from your Mac, iPod, Apple TV, and iPhone. This week in the news, during a special joint news conference from London, Apple and EMI announced DRM free music downloads. DRM, or Digital Rights Management, is copy protection placed on music that prevents the files from playing on devices other than the iPod and from sharing the music with your friends. The premium downloads will cost about 30 cents more than standard iTunes downloads. And this is such big news that today we are going to talk to EMI spokesperson Rotten Johnny live from London. Hello, Rotten. Isn't that John Mayer? Oh, free bird! Oh, I mean, free DRM music, free music, rock and roll! Indeed, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Tell us about EMI's DRM free music. Well, you see, we're going to release all of our music without drums. No drums at all. Just guitar, bass, and vocals. Oh, wait. Uh, that's wrong. It's uh, DRM, uh, Digital Rights Management. No digital rights management. Drums, yes, there will be drums. Okay, so you'll be able to use the music you download on any MP3 player, uh, right? Not just the iPod? Uh, yes, you could, but uh, why would you? I mean, it's like the Stratocaster of MP3 players. Or that really hot groupie that comes backstage, you know, surrounded by the other not-so-hot groupies. <laughs> okay, so these DRM-free songs cost 30 cents more than the ones with DRM. Is that correct? Yes, but you get so much more value. What exactly uh, do you get with them that's extra? You get no DRM. It's the added value of less. Do you get anything else? Uh, yes, there are the higher quality too. You know, you get uh, lots of those extra little kilobits per second. And the more kilos, the better, at least according to my dealer. Oh, and uh, yeah, plus the songs are louder. We've turned them all up to 11. Walk in, row! All right. Aren't you afraid of people pirating your music uh, with the DRM-free version? Uh, yes, we were very worried that this may lead to actually more people listening to our music. And we're trying everything that we can do to limit that as much as possible. Okay, I see. Thank you, Rotten. Uh, we look forward to hearing your music DRM-free. Thank you, and uh, I guess we should be adding those drum tracks back in. Um, yes. Oh, uh, one more question. When will the Beatles be coming to iTunes? The Who? No, not the Who. The Beatles. Never heard of them. In other news, Major League Baseball is coming to iTunes. Users will be able to download the MLB.com Daily Rewind Highlight Show and two weekly full-length Games of the Week. The programs will be available at the standard TV download price of $1.99 per program. Microsoft is one step closer to releasing a new version of Office for Mac which includes the popular Word and Excel programs. Reports say there is now a private beta test program in progress. When released, Office for Mac will be up to date with the new Office for Windows. Plus, it will be a universal binary for Intel Macs and have a few features that even the Windows versions don't have. Today's quick tip is handy for sun glare on your MacBook screen or as an easy April Fool's joke. If you press Command, Option, Control, 8, it will reverse the video on your Mac screen. Dude, what happened to my screen? In a related screen trick, did you know you can zoom into your Mac screen? Start by pressing Command Option 8 to toggle zooming to on, and then you can use Command Option and plus or minus to zoom in and out of your screen. We just hope that you use your newfound powers for good. If you want to send a document to somebody and want to ensure that they can see it, PDF documents are the way to go. Here's Gary to show us how to make PDFs. Hi, I'm Gary from MacMost.com, and today I'm going to show you how to make a PDF out of almost any application in Mac OS X. Now, what a PDF document is, is it's a universal uh, document that can be read on Macs, Windows, and even Linux. Uh, it's also known as Adobe Acrobat. And it's a great thing to be able to print out documents. Uh, don't have to worry about the fonts, the layout, the design, anything. It opens up and looks the same on anybody's computer. And it's very easy for anybody to have the Acrobat Reader. Matter of fact, it comes with just about every computer I've ever seen uh, on the market in the last few years. It's just one of these standard things that comes installed. And uh, you can create documents with it on Windows using specialized software. 
Uh, but on Macs you can actually just create it from anything by using the print command. It's really handy. Let's take a look at an example here. Say I have a small business and I want to print out an invoice for a client. I don't know what the client has. I don't know if they use Microsoft Word. I don't know if they, uh, you know, uh, what fonts they've got on their machine or whatever. But I want to email them an invoice and I want it to look exactly the way I want it to look. So in Microsoft Word here let's go and just use the project gallery to quickly create an invoice. Um, they've got a bunch of different templates to choose from. I'll just choose this first one and open and it's going to create this default invoice here. I'm not going to fill anything in right now. But you get the basic idea that it's an invoice pretty complex with a picture and a title and some colors and things in it. So I want to send this to the client. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to print. And instead of actually printing to a printer I'm going to go down here to this little PDF button that you may have noticed there before. There's a whole bunch of options for getting different types of PDFs. But I'm going to actually keep it simple right now and just do the Save as PDF option at the very top. It will then ask me for a name. So I'm going to just call this test and I'll save it. And it's going to uh, warn me that the margins are, uh, aren't big enough. But that's okay. We're just doing an example right here. So uh, I'm just going to continue. I'm going to quickly print this out. And on my desktop appears this test.pdf. Uh, let me close the Word document here. And then let me go and click on this test PDF which will open up in preview. And here we are running preview and we see the document we just printed out. Uh, it looks exactly the same and you can see it's not just bitmapped either. If I zoom in uh, you can see that there's a lot of detail in the, the fonts there. Uh, it's the actual real fonts, real characters in there, uh, not a bitmap. And I was easily able to open up in preview which is a handy PDF viewer that comes from Mac OS X. I can also open it up with the actual uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader. If I control click and do open with on that document I can select Adobe Reader and it will open up in Adobe Reader and you can see it, it opens it up a very large size and you can see some of the detail here. And this would be the same, do, uh, same application that anybody would have. And if for some reason they don't have it on their machine they could very easily get it. But I don't know how you wouldn't have it. I mean even to print out forms from uh, the government or to print out uh, uh, documentation from products you buy it's all in PDF. I'm sure just about every computer out there has a PDF viewer of some sort on it. So it's a very handy way to be able to print this out uh, and one of the great advantages of owning a Mac. Uh in this segment we'll answer your questions about how to get the most from your Mac. A viewer writes in, My OS 10.4 Mac has a super drive so how do I burn a CD with my files on it? Insert a blank CDR then when the dialog box appears choose Show in Finder. The CD icon will appear on your desktop. Drag the files you wish to burn into the CD, then double click on the CD icon. Next, choose the Burn button and your CD will begin burning. If you have a question for us, you can email us at questions at macmost.com. We thought we'd take the time to introduce to you some of our favorite Mac-oriented websites. If you need to find the latest version of a piece of software or want to find a piece of shareware or freeware for your Mac, look no further than versiontracker.com. Version Tracker has been around since the first days of the web, so it's no surprise that they have just about every piece of Mac software ever made. Recently, they've even added Windows software as well. Mac Most Loot is our contest segment where we come up with an Apple related question or challenge and send a randomly drawn winner a prize. This week's challenge is The new version of Mac OS X coming out later this year is Leopard. The current version is Tiger and the previous one was Jaguar. What was the feline name for the version of Mac OS X before Jaguar? Send your answers to loot at macmost.com. Thanks for watching the MacMost video podcast. If you want to contact us, if you have an Apple related product you'd like us to review, or if you would like to sponsor an episode of MacMost, you can email us at videopodcast at macmost.com. Be sure to visit our website for the latest news and to vote on the stories that you think are the most interesting. We'll also be posting tutorials and tips on our website throughout the week. This is Molly Stanberry for MacMost. See you next week. Oh, uh, yeah.